Hello, it's uh, Michael again, and welcome to week nine. So you might wonder, uh, or not wonder, you might have been waiting for this all along, which is what uh, takes us up the pyramid. So that's a pretty, pretty big leap. And many of you have already encountered or tried to use techniques that are common to this knowledge layer. And I'm going to just introduce them to you. Uh, what's important so far is that all the work that you've done and your demonstrations of your uh, flow through your information should take you back to week one where we just talked about getting lost. So part of the, the job of an information architect is to take these big data sets and to make them um, easy enough to explore and to find things within. And what many of you may have found is that some of the techniques you used and or the way you've demonstrated your ideas uh, are, you know, are pretty brittle. You know, they're kind of hard to fit things onto a page. They're very hard to get people to kind of comprehend all the options that they have. And even in your own experience on the web, you may have seen this transition away from some of uh, the overt information architecture techniques, such as just putting words onto a page and trying to uh, make it easier on users based on some other information. So this week we're going to get to kind of, we're getting to that layer. How do you get that other information? And so please go into the, uh, we're going to call it metadata. So uh, the great thing about you've dealt with data for eight weeks and that is absolutely 100% something that is vital. And if you uh, pursue more into this profession, you're gonna see that you're gonna get a little bit more help. Many of you might have not really connected the dots between why we did HTML and how that ends up on the screen, but I hope you see the connectors and why they're there and why they're important. Uh, this week, we're gonna get into um, some new stuff, but let me just go into last week. You did a great job on this uh, diagram. I hope that, uh, Technique was, if it was new to you, you all did really good. And how does that help you make decisions at a high level and communicate to others? So the whole point of this was to communicate to others outside of the discipline. How does my uh, navigation help people? How do these words help organize the data? And maybe you'd get to the point of some more intrinsic value, but the techniques that you've uh, explored are still common. You know, mo most sites do not have millions upon millions of pieces of data, so they don't need as many techniques. So this actually suffices for a huge variety. Most most uh, websites, for example, just don't aren't aren't even though their storage uh, is in databases like a blog. You you tend not to have um, just millions and millions of pieces of data, so you can actually use most of these techniques pretty effectively to just design uh, small scale sites. But in terms of metadata, and let me just get there quickly, um, metadata is is data about data, and one of the most uh, prominent ones that's really going to change almost everything is um, use, uh, the identity of the user. So if you have to log into a site, which you get to see is more and more common, uh, yes, you're going to be able to actually start to use that data to create uh, a little bit more of a um, personalized view, which is super. You can also use metadata uh, just literally here over in this data visualization area. So I love data viz and there, there is a whole course on data visualization and I just wanted to kind of remark about it because it's still that layer above, a layer called knowledge. The reason why it's called knowledge is that you're going to find this a little more trustable uh, for whatever reason, if you can understand it even though you probably not know, may not know uh, the data underneath it. And usually this data is numeric. So that's why people just tend to not really want to look at huge long columns of numbers and, and make sense of them. They need someone to make sense of it for them. And so you've got a variety of techniques, this one being a great one. Edward Tufte is mentioned a lot because he wanted to make sure you have as much information as possible in as little space as possible. So that's a great design uh, goal. There's also these, I don't know if these are popular anymore, but this idea of sort of a little um, infographics. Anyway, so there's data viz there, and the activity for this week is twofold. Um, one, I just want you to think about how those ratings that we removed from our data and now we're going to bring back because ratings are problematic. Um, that's all there is to it. But think about it. You know, people like them, but what 
the management of them is actually really, really critical. And I'm also going to stop right here because the final is coming up. And what is the final? The final is to take any of those ideas or all of those ideas that you've explored and be able to use that lens to understand how does a, a particular company not only uh, manage to give you findable data that's interesting, but also gets its data from its users. Now that's pretty neat. And the reason why I'm focusing on this is that you will go and sign up for this and contribute content to this. So for one example, I don't know if everybody knows, but you can just go ahead and write on Wikipedia, write whatever you want. Now, it's 2022, there might be a little bit more hurdles than there were in the old days, but certainly you can begin an article, you can write an article about yourself or whatever, at least you can start to understand how does this work as a service? You know, how does it manage to take your data and put it into a content and, and, and into formatting and, and allow it to be findable is even more interesting. So that's why I've listed all these, uh, to my knowledge, are all based on you're able to contribute content. There might be some new ones. Did I add TikTok to this? Yeah, let's just add TikTok. Um, but anyway, you know, there's, there's new ones popping up all the time. Um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and... <laughs> uh, but yes, if you do know of another a um, uh, service that is uh, uses um, information that, that anyone can um, can contribute, uh, let me know. And I can, I'm happy to, uh, there you go. All right, a little bit of work there. So that is week nine, the, um, you wanna understand which uh, service you're using, and then I'm asking you some questions about that service especially about the core data. So it's mostly the core data is going to be pretty easy to comprehend, but that's where you do need to go in, take a look. What is an individual record? Some of these services are also uh, intentionally a little broad. I think um, probably um, Instagram might be one of them where there's just a lot of different formats to the content. You don't have to get too worried about that. Maybe go for the core content and you will want to also look into the past. There's some ideas that you can get from looking at uh, articles and things about how these uh, services began, because most of them began very, um, uh, they, they didn't necessarily know what they were doing. They didn't know that they were going to be successful. So there's a lot of understanding there about how did they build their architecture to make themselves as popular as they became. So a lot of stuff to explore. Enjoy. Thank you so much.